I am so grateful that God has given us the opportunity to be able to discuss the work of education once more. When we think about the work of education, we have to understand that all true knowledge, all true wisdom comes from God. The wise man writes in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, that the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. We as a people have been called to a great commission. God's final remnant people have been called to give the final message of warning in this world. Are we prepared to give this message? John the Baptist, who likewise had been called to prepare the way for the Lord, needed a work of education prior to being able to do that work. In Sermons and Talks, Volume 1, page 394, it says that John the Baptist received a training for his life work, not in the schools of the rabbis, but in the wilderness, alone with God and his word. He was prepared to give the final message of warning. He was educated so that he could give that message of warning. I wish, I truly wish, that as the General Conference Education Director, I could stand in front of you today and say that we were living up to the responsibility that God had given to us in our church with regards to the work of education. But I cannot do that. We are not using correctly the opportunities that God has given to us in the great work of education. We have been abdicating our responsibility to the world, giving our children to Babylon to be educated, and then wondering why they are turning into Babylonians. Not investing the necessary resources to be sure that our children will be educated to the honor and glory of God. How can we give the final message of warning if we ourselves are not preparing this generation to give that message. In the book, Education, on page 14, it says, in a knowledge of God, all true knowledge and real development have their source. Do we not understand that God has given us a privilege to be involved in the work of education? but he asks us to live up to the privileges that he is giving to us. I wish that I could give you this pleasant, pleasant message today about how there's this work of education, do the work of education, but we're not doing that work, a work that we know that we must do. Parents, the work of education begins at home. Are you abdicating your responsibility to somebody else? The work of education begins right there in your home. What strengthens the family strengthens society. The school can never replace the home. The church, likewise, cannot replace the spiritual instruction that you are supposed to give at home. The church can complement this work. But true spirituality will begin at home, not at church. Likewise, education. Education begins at home. When your children go to their educational institution, those institutions should only be a complement to the education that is taking place in the home. To abdicate this responsibility is to make sure that our children will not receive the proper education to be prepared to give the final message of warning. Remember, what did it say? John the Baptist learned from God's word, the truth. Every other education is a complement to the work that you will do in your homes. Then the church having invested in its families, strengthening its families, is able to once more contribute to the success of the children of those families by investing in the work of education. The pandemic that we had in these last few years was a terrible thing, and it brought great strain to the church. But it did reveal 
the importance of home education because many schools closed and now children were staying at home and being educated from home and their parents now had to be involved in their education. Parents who until now have been minimally involved in their parents ed- in their children's education, just basically sending them off to somebody else to be educated, were realizing that their children needed to be educated at home. If anything, this pandemic did help the work of education, revealing the importance of education at home. You know, prior to the pandemic, in the United States of America, about 5.4% of households were involved in home education of some form. Last year, in 2020, it was 11.1%. One out of 10 children were now being educated full-time at home. This number will increase and grow. We as a church have a responsibility to support our families in their work. And we are only beginning to do this. I want to thank God that the brethren at the General Conference Council have invested the resources necessary to begin the production of our curriculum so that we as a church could support our parents in the work that they are doing at home by providing them with educational materials that will always bring honor and glory to God first. You know, it really doesn't matter what subject you're teaching. You still must honor and glorify God first. The math teacher may say, well, I'm teaching math. But in math, you are honoring and glorifying our creator. Every subject begins with an understanding that true wisdom begins with the Lord. Preparing a curriculum that our parents can use is something that I am so thankful the brethren of this current administration have prioritized and said is something that is important. We need your help. We need your support to make sure that this curriculum project will reach its conclusion so that parents everywhere will be able to see that they can be the directors of their children's education. So their children will be prepared to give the final message of warning in this world. In Testimonies, Volume 8, page 305, the pen of inspiration says that it is through educational processes that it's talking here about Satan, the mastermind in the confederacy of evil. It says that through educational processes, he is doing all in his power to obscure heaven's light. Are we going to use the materials of this world? Or will we use those things that are based upon the inspired word of God? Are we sacrificing our children to pagan gods by sending them to the institutions of this world to be educated. We're sending them to Babylon and then wondering why they are turning into little Babylonians. We as a church must invest in the work of education so that our children will be prepared to give this final message of warning to the world. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse two, it says, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Why would we send our children to the institutions of this world without giving them the preparation that was necessary in order for them to face the attacks of Satan? That foundational and fundamental education, it is necessary for our church to provide. Not in one place, not only in one language but in every language that we have the opportunity to do so and in every place. I'm blessed right now to be recording this message in a place that we call Mariah Heights. It's uh, out here in rural California, rural Northern California. And when this place was purchased in the 1950s, they dedicated it to the work of education. When I see everything that has been done for God's educational work in this place, I am so amazingly thankful to him. We have an elementary school here. The majority of the students of that school 
are not even from our church, but their parents send them to receive a Christian education based upon God's word. It has become a missionary outpost of our church. We have a missionary school right here on this property where young people come and give their time to be educated so that they know that whatever career they take, they will be able to share the final message of warning with this world. I thank God for everything that he has done in this place. And yet, do you know what I know? The Lord wants so much more. He says to me, he says, David, what is being done on that property is only the beginning of the work that is supposed to take place. In your location, the same work needs to occur. Our church needs to invest in schools. This is not an expense. My brethren and sisters, it is not an expense. It is an investment. Every single penny that was invested in this place is now being returned. The local church in this area has been blessed through the educational work that is being done. That same blessing should be yours. It should be ours in every place. Everywhere, investments need to be made so that parents can be supported in this work of education. If you are saying to yourself, oh, brother David, it's too expensive to do this, then understand that it is more expensive to try to rescue all of these children that we have lost because we have not supported families in the work of education. We are doing this in some places and those places are seeing the benefits and the rewards. I had the opportunity to share the gospel at a school in Brazil to do morning worship with the students at that school was amazing to see how the work of education has been such an asset and a benefit to the church. I've seen the same in other places. And wherever the investment in the work of education has taken place, the blessing returned to the church has been amazing. My dear brothers and sisters, in your place, it is possible. The Lord will open the way if you will make the investment in the work of education. I call on you to do this work, not because I want it, but because the Lord desires of us to invest in this very important work that has been set before us. Not only in elementary education, but in the preparation of our youth to be missionaries regardless of what career field they enter. In the Great Controversy, on page 69, it speaks about the model that the Waldenses used, a model used to great success. And so in Great Controversy, the pen of inspiration says, while the Waldenses regarded the fear of the Lord as the beginning of wisdom, they were not blind to the importance of a contact with the world, a knowledge of men and of active life, in expanding the mind and quickening the perceptions. From their schools in the mountains, some of the youth were sent to institutions of learning in the cities of France or Italy, where there was a more extended field for study, thought, and observation than in their native Alps. The youth thus sent forth were exposed to temptation. They witnessed vice. They encountered Satan's wily agents who urged upon them the most subtle heresies and the most dangerous deceptions but their education from childhood had been of a character to prepare them for all of this. Did they know that they were going to have to go out into the world? Yes, but they were prepared by the work of education that had been done at home and with the support of their community, which was their church. Right now, This is the work that we need to be engaging in. That work of supporting our families so that they can educate their children and supporting our youth by providing opportunities for them to be firmly grounded in the truth. Just recently, right here on this campus that I'm recording this from, 
here we have Plymouth Leadership College. And we had a program that just concluded. Some of the young people who came there, I was not sure if they were going to be able to finish this program. The program was hard. The program was very intense. At the end of the program, I myself knew that these students, they are not fully prepared. But I knew that they had the information necessary to be able to know how to resist the temptations of Satan. That they now knew where to look. That they had been exposed to scripture in a way that they had dedicated themselves to. I might not have the answer to every question that they are going to be tempted with, but they were exposed to the one source of all truth that they can come back to again and again, regardless of what questions Satan places before them. The church has a responsibility to have these institutions in place. The Lord is calling you to support this work of education. Once a year, we collect an offering for the Education Department's Endowment Fund. Once a year, we have this work of education placed before us. I wonder if you will support the work that is going to make it possible for us to have these institutions everywhere. That work of education has been placed before all of us. Parents, the support of the educational work is a support to your own family. Young people, know that the support of the educational work is done so that you will be able to have those institutions available to you. Those who already have their children grown understand that the work of supporting the work of education, that work is still your work because it strengthens your church. It strengthens your community. God desires us to fulfill the plan of educational reform. We are not to send our children out into this world until they have received a firm foundation in the truth. Moses made mistakes, but Moses was able to recognize and learn because of the foundation that he received in his early years from his mother. You and I are to make possible this for every single one of God's children. None should be left without the support of this church with regards to their education. Let every mother and father know that they're being supported in the work of educating their children so that when these children go out into this world, and face the temptations that the enemy places before them, like the Waldenses, they will be prepared to face those temptations. I invite you to enter into this important, important work. The pen of inspiration in volume six of the testimonies, page 135 says, the Lord has called us out from the world that we may be witnesses for his truth. And all through our ranks, young men and women should be trained for positions of usefulness and influence. And so I leave you with the words that the Apostle Paul left to Timothy. In, for, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, he says, Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That truth which has been committed to you, that truth which has been committed to our church, the Lord desires us to commit that to the next generation. I invite you to be part of this fundamental reformation of the work of education. Amen.